What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, username enumeration via account lock. Half of this lab is really figuring out how to sort the lab with the limitations of Burp Community Edition. The other half of the lab is fairly similar to previous labs, username enumeration via different responses from the web app, depending on whether the username is valid or not. I'm going to start by jumping into the solution here provided by Portswigger just to highlight why this particular method does not work with Burp Community Edition. It's based around login request throttling. So if we try and log in too many times with a certain user, we'll eventually get the response you have made too many incorrect login attempts. Now, a little bit further down the file, we're told at some point during the process, we need to wait for a minute to allow the account lock to reset. In other words, this login throttling is going to be reset after one minute. Now, what we're asked to do here is to set two payloads in Burp Intruder. We have our first payload markers around the username, and the second is actually a null payload marker. And we're told to generate five null payloads. The idea is for every invalid username, because we're going to be iterating through five null payloads, we're essentially trying each username five times. Now, this would be great if everything was in order, but firstly, the usernames won't be in order. So we will eventually cycle through five usernames, but not all at once. And the second problem is with Burp Community Edition, the requests are going to be throttled. So by the time we get around to retrying a username for the second, third, fourth, or fifth time, the account lock is already going to be reset because it will have been more than a minute. So this solution just doesn't work with the Burp Community Edition. We need to re-engineer the solution if we want to solve the slab with the Community Edition of Burp. The solution is going to revolve around the fact that there's more than one way of being able to achieve five of each username being tried in quick succession. And while this null payload marker is an attempt at being elegant, it actually breaks the lab for anyone that doesn't have the paid edition of Burp. And in reality, all we need is a word list that simply has each username five times. That way Burp Intruder will try each username in order. And if the request throttling becomes too intense, we can simply break up that word list into sections because the way Intruder works, it always starts off with fast requests and they slow down as the attack continues. Portswigger does provide us with a list of sample usernames. In fact, I have it here saved as username underscore wordless.txt. So we simply want to take this file and each username needs to be written out five times. I have this node script, five usernames.js. We don't need to spend a long time with this file. You can copy the output into a fresh Node.js file if you want to. The idea is it's going to loop through the list and for each name in the list, it's going to echo that name five times. It's going to put the output to a file five usernames.txt. If we take a look at the five usernames.txt, it's really just the word list, but each username appears five times. So now taking a look at the lab, the first thing we're going to do is submit an invalid login request. We'll just use the password password. Let's click login. We're going to capture this request in burp. So here is a copy of the login request sent to the intruder. The first step is to place payload markers around the user. We're going to make sure attack type sniper is set. Now in the walkthrough, this is where we're asked to place a second payload marker which is going to have a null payload. We don't care about that. And we're also told to use a different attack type, but we're going to be using sniper because we only have a single payload. Let's head to the payload section. We're just going to grab our word list of five usernames, copy that to the clipboard. We can then just choose the paste option. We can then choose to start the attack. What we're looking for here is a change in the response column. The user MySQL here is receiving a response from the page. You have made too many incorrect login attempts. Now the other users don't do that. They simply have the message incorrect username or password. And the reason is that they are not valid users. In fact, only a valid user is going to be receiving the message. You have made too many incorrect login attempts. In other words, this is username enumeration because we get different responses for a valid and invalid user when we reach the point when the request throttling would be triggered. So at this stage, we know that MySQL is going to be a valid user. We can stop this attack for now. By the way, just a side note, 
if you don't have a difference in response and things start getting really slow, it might be a good idea to break that list of username payloads down into sets of 100 because it's after this point you'll really notice the impact of the throttling at burp's end. So now back at Burp Intruder, we can clear the payload markers. We know the valid user in this case is MySQL and the password is what we want to figure out next. We can wrap payload markers around password. Let's head to payloads. In this case, we can simply use the unaltered password list from Portswigger. Let's clear the previous payload list. Let's choose the paste option. Now we need to grep the output in this case. So if we head to the settings tab, we're interested in grep extract. This allows us to extract part of the response between two bounds. Let's choose add. It gives us a sample response that Burp has already received. And we're interested in this particular error message. And we know it's between the password with the class is warning and the closed password tag. But we'll figure that out automatically. All we need to do is highlight the message, choose okay. And we can see here in the list from close warning class to end close paragraph tag, it's always going to return the value of that error message. And we'll see in this case, depending on whether we have a valid login, we're going to get a different message from the app. In fact, if we have a successful login in this case, we won't get any error message from the app. Okay, with everything in place, let's choose start attack. Now looking at the output here, we can see in particular for the payload or password, let me in, instead of the response you have made too many incorrect login attempts, we actually get no error message. Now we don't get let into the app at this stage because we are still being throttled. We're not allowed to log in at this stage because you've made too many login attempts and we don't get the typical 302 found redirect response. In other words, we can see that this would be a successful login because the error from the app has changed. So it's revealed that information to us, but it's not going to allow us to log in just yet because there's obviously some brute force login protection in place. So now we have a username and password, username MySQL, password let me in. Let's stop the attack. At this stage, we're going to have to wait for one minute so that the brute force login protection can reset. Okay, I've left it one minute. I'm going to try the username MySQL and the password let me in. I'll choose login. You can see now we've successfully logged in as MySQL and we get the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. So there was really two sides to this. First was username enumeration via different responses from the app. The second is although logins were locked after we passed a certain number of unsuccessful login attempts, once again, the app is still providing different responses depending on whether the password is valid or not. The interesting thing is that that means there's actually a password check going on on the back end as well. So despite the fact that logins are not allowed for a specific user, the web app for whatever reason is still checking the password against the stored hash in the database. To me that seems totally unnecessary. The web app doesn't even need to check whether the password is valid, it can simply return the same response either way. And if the app were to do that, we wouldn't get a difference in response depending on whether the password is correct. We wouldn't then be able to brute force the user's password in this case. So I guess if logins aren't allowed and we don't want to leak information regarding whether the password is correct or not, then simply don't check whether the password is correct, then it's impossible for the web app to leak that kind of information. All right, hopefully it helped you solve the lab. Thanks for checking out the content. Catch you guys in the next lab.